<laughs> well, that's a, that's a nice, nice warm welcome, huh? Yeah, Here. it's pretty warm. <laughs> Could have been warmer, but I'll take it. <laughs> oh, nice. See? There you go. <laughs> So you uh, like being here at the Times? You were here again two uh, nights in a yeah, row. Yeah, that's right. I was here last night for a, uh, a, a, a question and answer thing and a, a screening of Veep for Wesleyan University. But uh, delighted to be back in the same very chair. Yeah, it's great. To, it's great to have you. And uh, and uh, what does it feel like to be like the vice president? Uh, how is that? <laughs> I dig it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. It's, you, um, you, you, could you do it in real life, do you think? No, I could not. <laughs> but um, I certainly can pretend to do it. Um, it's, a, it's a very ripe um, area comedically, I believe. Um, and the reason I think so is, is really because if you think about it, I, I, I challenge you to think of a single politician in Washington who aspires to the vice presidency. Right. <laughs> It's interesting. And, and therein lies yeah. kind of fundamentally uh, the mm -hmm. comedy of the show. <laughs> <laughs> right. To tell you the truth. But does, uh, it doesn't make you, uh, like, a, it's not a role that gets in your head so, so much then. Like, it gets in your head? Like, what do you, you mean? know, like, uh, I'm the vice president on set here. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, of course, you're, you're saying they don't have any power anyway, so I guess... Well, I mean, they are, they are, it's a powerful position, and, yes, and yet, at the same time, it's, it's powerless. Yeah. And, um, uh, and in, in our situation, in, in this show, the, the, the back story is that Selena Meyer was a, a, a very a successful um, politician prior to this moment. Was she a senator? Moment. She was a, yeah. in Congress, and then she was a senator right. from Maryland, mm -hmm. and, and, a, and a, a very good senator. Um, and then she was a contender for the nomination for her party, for the, mm -hmm. the presidential nomination. And it looked like she might be the nominee for a certain period of time until there was an incident or two uh, <laughs> that we allude to, uh, right. uh, one of which may have been the wearing of some odd-shaped hat that uh, <laughs> set her back. And anyway, she ultimately came in third mm -hmm. in, in the primary race. And then she was asked to join the ticket. Right. So um, uh, that that therein is the backstory, although yeah. Well, it's getting some great advanced buzz. You got to be excited about that. Yeah, I am yeah. excited. I'm. I mean, I'm it's, uh, uh, yeah. It's nice that people are so, sort of jumping on it even before it's getting out there. Yeah, so. isn't that extraordinary? Um, you jumped into this after you obviously had a nice run in your previous. Yeah. Did you want to get right back into a sitcom, or did you? Um, yeah, I, I did yeah. actually. I um, I really like. To work, <laughs> and um, I. That's my next question: Like to work? The answer is yes. yes. <laughs> you got a pen? I'll write it for yes. you. Yes. Yeah, um, I do, and I was I was hoping to to get into it right away. I didn't anticipate this happening so quickly. Um, you never know when a good idea is going to come along, right. um, but when it does, you've got to grab it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, this was pitched to me. I heard about it. It was in development at HBO, and uh, my agent said they're developing some. Uh, a, a show about an unhappy vice president, and I thought, oh man, that sounds so good. I, it immediately a, a, appealed to me. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, when I heard Armando Inucci was was the the, the brains uh, behind mm -hmm. it, I thought, oh, I, I got to get. Always it. written for a woman. Yes. Yes. Imagine mm -hmm. that. No, but it's. The, the, no, no, no. Yeah. I say that because it could easily it could be easily a man. Been. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was always written uh, uh, to be a woman. So tell us a little bit about Armando because. Probably the audience doesn't. Well, know yeah, him, actually, uh, and probably they don't. But you'll know of him soon. Uh, for Armando is um, is a genius, I, and I actually say that very seriously. I, um, and he's a, and a one, wonderfully kind man to boot. Um, but he is um, he's a, a Brit, and he's an icon in the UK. Um, and uh, although in the states nobody knows of him yet. But a huge icon. He's got a show in the UK called The Thick of It, which is um, a masterfully done program that's a huge hit there. And then, of course, he also did. Also a political satire. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And then he did this movie, In the Loop, right. uh, for which he was nominated for an Academy Award uh, with James Gandolfini. And again, a political satire. Right. Um, and uh, I encourage everybody to, to rent it because it's really, you'll get a kick out of it. And. Um, so let's see. And then, so we met 
uh, for what was supposed to be a brief little meeting to talk about the concept and so on. We're supposed to have tea. And uh, it turned into a three and a half hour uh, brainstorming session about the project, about the character, about the tone, about the this, about that. And it was really exciting. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And we got along very well. And. Uh, uh, you know, talking about political mannerisms, because really that's what this show is about. It's really about uh, behavior in politics as opposed to um, actual ideology. There's not a political point of view other than to say that these are people, these politicians, who are very human. Uh, and uh, and let's, see, let's peel back those layers and see mm -hmm. what's going on behind the curtain in, in and, that real way. And when it was presented to you, did, did, was the character described to you in, in a way that you kind of grasped, like, oh, I get her, I, I, I can get that? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And and and, but I mean, we. This is this is very much Armando's process. I mean, he he has a notion and he starts to write it, but then he's very collaborative collaborative with the actors. So even in that first meeting we had, he said, you know, well. I'm thinking she's trying to get, he was telling me the idea of the pilot, which hadn't been written, but the notion that she had this idea to get a, a clean jobs legislation through uh, on Capitol Hill, and she was going to sort of green up all of these right. buildings yes. on Capitol Hill. And I said, oh, that is unbelievable, because on the show that I just wrapped doing Christine, I tried to green up our uh, bill, our, our yeah, uh, set. set. Yeah. And, and which I did with some success, uh, including I had all of the uh, plastic utensils replaced with cornstarch utensils. Cornstarch utensils. Yeah, I, they exist, you know. I hadn't heard that until I saw the pilot. But, yeah. yeah. And so the first day we had them, and I got my coffee, and I'm stirring my coffee, and I pull the cup up, and I mean the, <laughs> the spoon out, and it just. It had melted. It right? melted. <laughs> and I said, oh man, we got to use That's, this. It's a scene. We got to use this. And it's a scene in the, in the opening yeah. episode of the show, yeah. But it's interesting because when you. I mean, we think about it, Christine is a very different character. Oh yes, yeah, sure. and and uh, and you. I, I, it seemed like you've done different characters in different forms, and Christine was more. Well, there's a lot of physical comedy in that, right? Yes. And and she she was kind of, well, insecure. I guess is the right word. Or sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but it's still you know an endearing kind of a character. You know, yeah. Very I warm and endearing. Shifting from that to this. What's the challenge? Is it? Uh, it's actually. Um, uh, what is the challenge? It's a, it's a different style of show that we're doing, uh, of, of, of Veep, than than that. Of course, on, on Christine, uh, it was a multi-camera show in which, which means we, on a stage with three cameras, yeah, with an audience. Exactly. Right. So you hold for your laughs. Um, and uh, you, it, it, it's just a different style. It's a style that I'm very familiar with, same as Seinfeld, right. um, and um, it, and one that I, frankly, adore because you know the audience really informs the material as you're performing it, and it, it, it's a, a very you know it's it's somewhat theatrical, frankly. Exactly, it's like a play. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And the the V show is shot like a movie. Right. And in addition to that, it's it, the style of it is such so that it's, um, well, let's see how I can exactly explain this. There's a lot of overlapping talking, sort of the way people do in real life, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, and maybe somebody's, maybe what would be uh, understood to be the punchline uh, uh, in a scene, you might not be on the person delivering it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might be on somebody watching. Right. Overhearing it, or exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it has a it has a grittiness, a sort of very tayness to it. It's right. sort of a little Altman esque, I guess. I don't know, but anyway, it's it's quite different. And I, I I have to admit, I adore doing Veep. Don't get me wrong, but I it's it's you hard to give. You missed the laugh, right? Yeah. Because yeah, it, it, it's always struck me that when you've done that kind, and then you switch to the single camera film kind, you don't know that it's funny. Yeah. You don't. If you're on stage and you tell a joke on Seinfeld or Christine and it doesn't work, yeah, you say well, we got to fix that. That didn't work, right? You, right. And you kind of, kind of. Whereas if you're filming, it's you're going on faith. You got, <laughs> you hope it's funny, right? Right. Right. Well, I mean, hopefully you have a sense of what's funny. You do, but yes, yeah, yeah. You know, but um, I, I, I will say that you know I, I did particularly in the beginning. I would go back to the monitor a lot and I watch playback to see if that really did work and uh -huh. and, and so yeah. on and so forth. And if you make the crew laugh. You know, if right. you see the guy's holding the camera and, and, and you see this, 
behind the camera, then, uh, then, you, then it's a wonderful feeling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so do you think you're naturally funny? <laughs> uh, I mean, you've done comedy um, your whole career. Well, I guess you could say I have a good sense of humor, mm -hmm. you know? I, I, to tell you the truth, you know, it's funny because people assume that I'm funny sometimes when I'm not meaning funny, to be funny. But you are funny. No, I know, but like sometimes I think there's a sort of, an, a, what happens is there's kind of an earned thing that I've noticed as a, as a performer. Like, you know, if I go on, I do Letterman, for instance, yeah. or, mm -hmm. which I did last night, and I, I think at one point I, I was listening to him and I sort of took a pause before I answered, and I didn't mean it to be a joke, but people thought it was a joke. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's sort of an assumption there. Yeah. But yeah, I think I'm, I, I think I'm funny. A little well, bit funny. I, a little bit funny. The reason I ask that is I, I have interviewed a lot of funny people, and I always ask this. It's a, maybe an annoying question. Uh-oh. But did, is there a point in your life when you sort of knew, oh, I'm funny? Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, I, yeah. when it sort of occurred to you, OK, I see, I'm funny. I can make people laugh, or I see a funny take on things. Were you that yes. way as a child? I was that way as a child. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I remember, well, I mean, the fir I remember the first laugh I got, actually. Uh, I was very, very little, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I stuck two raisins up my nose. Ah. And it Hilarious. killed. Killed. <laughs> and, um, and then I inhaled them. Ah. And we had to go to the emergency room. We went to the emergency room. Yeah. yeah. But um, it was worth it. It was definitely it was worth, definitely it. worth it. it. It was definitely worth it. My yeah. son did that with a carrot, a piece of carrot. Not oh. a big carrot. You know, like the piece yeah. of carrot in like um, yeah. macaroni salad? Yes. Right up the nose. Yep. Emergency Back room. to the emergency And then you know they have special devices to go up the nose. It's yeah. really, it's kind of fascinating. Oh. It's we'll, absolutely, we'll it's move a, on from an that. astounding fact. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll move on, but, but. Uh, no, let's dwell on that. Uh, well, exploring <laughs> your comedy town. Um, yeah. You went to Northwestern I did. for theater, right? I did, yes. Did you specialize in comedy? Um, no, but I felt I got I got a lot of comedic roles. Uh -huh. um, although not all comedic roles, but but the ones that seemed to work the best. I I, I will tell you this: when at Northwestern uh, there was a show and still is a show there called the Meow Show, mm. and um, it's sort of a comedy improv show. Mm -hmm. And in my freshman year, I got into it. And Lord, I mean, I really felt like I'd made it. Mm -hmm. I mean, made it. And I kind, I, I, I kind of had on campus. It was really a cool thing to mm -hmm. get into, and and that sort of was the beginning of a direction for me. Mm -hmm. Met a lot of people who were still in my life now, as a matter mm -hmm. of fact, um, good friends. And um, uh, um, and it. And then I, I did a, I did Second City while I was in while I was going to Northwestern too. But I um, I started to get the jobs that I started to get uh, uh, were were jobs in comedic with comedic material. But it's interesting because I was going to ask about Second City because you were in college, but but were in the troupe or you mean mm -hmm. were taking classes and then you moved into the troupe or. No, I got into it and went and just well, auditioned. Well, that's pretty and also amazing, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it was. It was pretty amazing. It was the hardly a glamorous gig because I was in the uh, touring company. I wasn't on the main stage. So we would go to Dundee, Illinois, mm -hmm. and uh, to the Chateau Louise and per <laughs> perform for a, a number of alcoholics. And, uh, <laughs> that Doing was, improv uh, for alcoholics. Yeah, good, good times. Yeah. Good times. <laughs> but they always say fabulous training, right? Because yes. you had a Use your brain and That's right. come up with things. And, right. And somehow, right after that, you auditioned for Saturday Night Live, right? Well, in fact, I didn't audition. I was oh, you doing, didn't? no, I was doing um, a show then with the Practical Theater Company in Chicago, which is the theater company that my uh, then boyfriend, now husband, Brad Hall, was uh, one of the founders with, with his best friend, Brad, um, Paul Ross. And uh, we were doing this show that was a success in Chicago over the summer. Um, a big success, actually, in Chicago between my junior and senior year of college. And Dick Ebersol and Bob yeah. Tischler, right. who were producers of Saturday Night Live at the time, came to Chicago, uh, and they saw our show. Mm -hmm. And we didn't even know they were in the audience. It was one of those stories. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so afterwards, they said, we'd like to hire all of you uh, to come and be on Saturday all Night Live. All of you? Yes. Wow. It was me and uh, Brad. Brad and Paul 
Bross and Gary Kroger. Right. The four of us were in the show. Yeah. And off yeah. we went. Yeah. Right. And you went off to Saturday Night Live at like 21 or something. Correct. Right? Yeah. That's also pretty remarkable. Yeah. And, and uh, I, a lot of people don't realize you were on that for three years. Well, because I was horrible on it. <laughs> well, and, you and weren't as horrible as you were unseen. You didn't get many shots. I didn't get like. a uh, yes. But what I, I guess what I mean to say is that I, was go I went in very unprepared. Um, and uh, I didn't know what I know now about how to uh, negotiate that terrain. Right. And mm -hmm. I also was incredibly naive. And I thought that it was you know, sort of, it was an ensemble and we'd all come up with material together and, you know, I mean, because that's how we did it at school yeah, and, right. um, and, uh, and that's how we were doing it at Practical Theater Company, but it didn't really work like that there. No, they were cutting throats there. It was, it was yeah. cutthroat, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and also, uh, I should say that I, I am not a writer. Um, I can work with writers and I can write with people, but I'm not myself alone a writer. And mm -hmm. so that is, um, that is a little bit of a problem. So you needed someone to generate the material for you there. And, right. And that was intensely fought over because exactly. the writers would line up with the people they liked or could perform their material. And, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, so it was so a those, tricky time. Those years were like what? You were just fumbling along or you thought, well, I'm not getting as far as I want, but I'm learning things? or. I guess all of the above, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, I really did come out of that experience knowing what I didn't want to do. Yeah. And, um, and that was a very valuable lesson. Sort of like grad school in a sort of weird kind of way. Yeah. But I, 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 knew that I, I knew that I had to have fun in order to get anywhere. <laughs> so Pollyanna-ish, but yeah. in fact, it really is the truth. That, yeah. That's been my experience as a performer, that if I'm having a good time doing something, if I'm really enjoying it, this is so basic, what in the hell am I talking about? I mean, of course, that's yeah. true for everybody, but right. it does mm -hmm. come through in performance, and so. Um, but you didn't question your career direction or anything, and say, oh, no, I'm not, no, I'm no. not uh, getting on enough, and I. Oh, you know, no, 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 yeah. I was, I, I mean, I was, uh, I was definitely beaten up there, and, um, and that was a bummer. But having said that, though, I, you know, I felt like, well, screw you all. I'll show you or something, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I'll get another gig somewhere. But, and, and Brad was performing too, right? So, he was. Yeah. Yeah, he was he got, performing He was too. doing more. He, he, he was, because yeah. he, he did the news for two right. years. Right, he did That's the news right. for two years. So he yeah. was, but, so life in New York was still good. I mean, it was still your... Yeah, I mean, and, yeah, we were young and, you know, whatever. It was good. And then my third year is when Larry David came on board. Yeah. And he was there and for a year. And that's people really don't know. That yeah, he, that's right. Because he never appeared on it, I don't think. He never appeared, and he never got a, sh a, a, a sketch on the air. He didn't get one sketch on the air. He got Why one sketch. He got one sketch on, and then they cut it between dress and air. <laughs> <laughs> and we were miserable together, so we actually bonded in that third uh, year. Yeah. Um, because uh, he was he was unhappy, I was unhappy, so we could get together and talk about how unhappy we were. Right. And that was very um, happy, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting that because that paid off later. But you, in between, you did. I know you did films. You did. A, yeah. I mean, you, you're, Seinfeld came along in ninety, um, uh, maybe ninety one or eighty nine yeah, or something like that. Yeah. But, but in in between, you had not done more TV. I don't think. I no, I did. I did. A, oh no, you did a show by called Day by Day. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And yeah. I did a pilot. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. that was a Gary a spin off from Family Ties that didn't go anywhere. But you know. Yeah. They they knew me at NBC. Right. They knew me at NBC. So, then your life did change. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, what's interesting about Seinfeld and people don't know is that there was no Elaine in the pilot. Correct. There was it, no. Um, there was no female. Friend, right in, in the pilot at all, right. So how did you enter the picture in that? I entered the picture. Uh, I guess they did. They did the pilot, and NBC was not sure if they were going to pick this thing up. They said, "Well, all right, we'll give you a four order." Four. They, four, and you know it came through late night. Late night, right? Yes. And um, and we want you to add a girl, you know. So um, I was under con. I, I had a dev development deal at Warner Brothers actually at the time. I didn't know about it. And then, the, I mean, I didn't know about the, the Seinfeld thing. Sorry. You knew you had a deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. See, I didn't mean that to be funny, but then it then was. was. Yeah. Um, anyway, and so, um, and then um, 
so I didn't know about that. And then my deal sort of fell apart, and the thing I was working on didn't work. And the next day, I got a call from Larry saying, I'm doing this thing. I need you to look at it. Would you read it? Blah, blah, blah. And I said, OK, yeah. And I read uh, two th these scripts, and I was floored by it. I thought, nobody's writing anything like this on TV. You know? I mean, it mm -hmm. was. Uh, it was unlike anything that was on television at the time. And I thought, yeah, I guess I'll go in and meet Jerry. And so I did. And I really liked him. And we sort of read the script together. And, and then we made a deal over the week. And we shot those. And we shot the next week. It was very, very, very lickety split. And it was only you. They, did, they weren't looking at other Elaine's? Or do you know? Um, I know that they were looking at other people. But when I, but I, I think they were. But yeah. But, but Larry knew you. Yeah. You had kept up with Larry. And no, I hadn't, actually. Really? <laughs> so he calls out, remember me from Saturday Night Live? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, isn't that great for you that I remembered you? <laughs> totally. I mean, that was pretty. But OK, so now they present you this character, Elaine. Yeah, Elaine. right. And uh, what did you think of her? Did you have a handle on this? Well. Because this is also someone we haven't seen before, I don't think, in yeah. TV. You know, Elaine didn't have a lot to do in the beginning. <laughs> and so I was, con I, to be honest with you, I mean, when she did have something to do, that is to say it was written on the page, I, I, would, I was delighted. But sometimes not as much. So I'd have to, I, I would very often try to find a way to get a laugh in there. Right. And maybe that was part of the anchor that Elaine had was fueled by that. I'm not really sure, uh -huh. actually, now that it just now occurred to me. But so, um, you know, I don't know. I well, it's interesting because when uh, I was trying to research and say, well, you know, how did they develop Elaine? And what is said about it is that you informed the character. Like Carol Liefer, who was one of the writers on the show, said that it was your assertiveness, intelligence, and sense of humor oh. that came out of the character. Isn't and she a lovely girl? <laughs> <laughs> but, but that, and, you, and Elaine did get much more assertive and, yeah. you know, and I, I, I who decided that you would say, get out and push people through the wall? That was so fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Was that you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's truly a signature moment. Yeah. And, uh, and they then used it again and again and again. And yeah. got, she got more and more forceful in her. Uh, yeah. You know? But I mean, was that just you saying, I, you know, this is what this character would do? And, yeah, know. it just was sort of born out of the rehearsal process. I, I don't really remember exactly how, but. Yeah. Um, you know, it's something that I said, and there was something that I would sometimes do. You know, sort of smack somebody and go, "Oh, get out!" Yeah. You know, but Maybe then two hands. Like <laughs> but that, that seemed to feel yeah. right. You yeah. Know? <laughs> well, it worked fantastically. Did you like I mean, Jason when he was in the show? Would always say that he 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 felt uncomfortable because everyone called him George when he was in the show. Oh. Right. He would walk down the street. And right. He, it, like people would interview him. And, he, and they'd start interviewing him as Jason and say, so George, you know, right. because he got, did, did that happen with Elaine and you? I mean, did people sure. see you as Elaine? Yes. yes, yes. And they would say, oh, Elaine. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And did you resent it? <laughs> or did you think it was funny? Did you... um, I, I've, I've, I understand why people would do that. You know, I mean, they do it to this day, you know? I mean, it, un, under certain circumstances, I remember, for instance, when I was having my first son and yeah. I was uh, in labor. And I was in, they had, well, to be, I was naked in the, in the <laughs> delivery room, and I had the thing around me. And I was sort of uh, standing up and trying to get comfortable. And the nurse walked in, and I'm standing there massive with this huge thing around me. And she goes, oh, a name! <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> It was so off-putting um, yeah. in that moment. Yes, I could see that. Yeah, yeah. right, <laughs> right. Maybe, maybe not so much at the grocery store, but yeah. there, there yeah, was a little. Yeah, there was a little strange. <laughs> but did you, you, it was such an iconic show and an iconic character. Yeah. And, um, and you did win an Emmy for it in, in 1996, I think? I right? think. No, yeah. Yeah, no, no, you're right, 96. Do you yeah. remember? Which episode that you won for, by any chance? I'm afraid I don't. No, oh, okay. I'm so sorry. Well, it's just. Uh, I will you, tell you, you that I was shocked to win because I had lost so many times prior to that. Right. 
Well, and actually, the truth is, the so show did everyone had, on the show. Yeah, the show had, did not win many Nearly awards. what it deserved. No, no, it won the Emmy once for well, best show. Yeah, that's right. And uh, Michael Richards won several. Yeah, and I don't think Jason, Jason never, never won. won. And Jerry, Jerry never won. won. Yeah. Uh, never won for direction. It, it didn't. It didn't. Maybe one it didn't writing, win a lot, yeah. which is kind of appropriate for that show. You In know, a way, it's a it's yeah. a bunch of it's a bunch of losers, and <laughs> you know, why well, should they win anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, but it was you know a show that was originally not a big hit. It uh, took many years until the fourth year, I guess, fifth right. year, uh, and and was sort of an under the radar kind of a cult hit. People yeah. would talk about it, but. But when it did, did emerge then, it became a part of the culture, so that things that you said and were said on the show became like, people would say yada, 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 or they'd yeah. say, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that. Or they, it, it, we can go on and on. Yeah, it, you bet we really can. It really became yeah. part of the culture. And I don't know how, was that weird or amazing or? Um, it's, it's actually really, uh, um, what's interesting to me is today when people are talking to me, and without knowing it, they'll incorporate something like, and then, you know, yada, 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 and they'll say that to me, and I know that they're not realizing it in the moment that, you know, yeah. you know, it's sort of, you, you go backwards, it's, it's wild. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty it's, wild. It's life imitating art, kind yeah. of, yes, but I, I just, to me, that's something an actor doesn't often run into. Not many actors have that, where they cross over into the general culture. Yeah. And in a, in a way that, you know, remarkable and, and transcendent in some way. And you had that, it's, I don't know whether you thought about it while you were doing it or you thought about it since then, but it's... Yeah, I wasn't really aware of it when we were doing it. I mean, I was somewhat aware, but I think that the phenomenon of Seinfeld didn't frankly hit me until it was over. Yeah. Um, it was a very uh, intensely busy time for me personally, just because I was having my children and trying to go to work and that was hard to mm. juggle those two things. And um, and I don't know. It's sort of like you know, we lived in L.A. We went to Studio City. We went to the Radford lot. We go onto Stage Nine, shoot it in there, right. and then you go back into your car and you go home. And you're sort of not necessarily that aware of the the impact. I mean, I don't mean we're we're completely unaware, but yeah. the the magnitude of it. Right. And I remember when we were shooting the final episode of the show, and they had to put. Um, uh, like big, what do you call those things? You know, big things to block out the the street, oh. so mm -hmm. that people looking through the gate of the the where we were shooting couldn't see who was entering the set. And it was like, God, who gives a shit? I mean, <laughs> it's just so. It was like we're having a bunch of the guest stars. You know, it's yeah. a TV show. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry if I wasn't supposed to swear. I don't know how that works. Okay. Well, anyway. We're playing clips. You're swearing like crazy. Don't oh, worry okay. About that. Oh, yeah. And so anyway, um, <clears throat> but. Um, and I remember thinking, wow, this because uh, beyond the barricades that they, they'd put up were tons of people with cameras and stuff, you know? And by the way, this is before the iPhone and the yeah. and even the, the 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 popular culture phenomenon of twenty four hours a day had not completely hit yet. Yeah, the internet wasn't covering you every, your every move like it right. would now. That's yeah. right. And mm -hmm. there was this celebrity culture hadn't hit this pinnacle that is uh, insane like it is today. So it it really was rather uh, striking. Yeah. To me anyway. All right, I'm going to ask you an obnoxious question. Oh God. Did what you is have it? a favorite episode? You must have been asked this a million times. No, I don't have a favorite episode. I have favorite moments, yeah. you know? Um, and to be honest with you, the moments that, I, that make me the happiest are the moments that were hard for me to get through oh. uh, doing them, just because they made me laugh so hard, oh. you know? Um, for example. Uh, <laughs> uh, I knew that when I just set myself up, but um, there was a moment that I, that, um, <laughs> when, 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 remember when uh, Kramer put the Merv Griffin set in oh, his yeah. apartment? Oh yeah, famous show. <laughs> yes. And he, he said that um, that he was going <laughs> to take a break. Remember? Yeah. He, yes. He, he's going to take a break. Yes. <laughs> he eats the <laughs> chips and he was right. drinking the thing. I swear to God, <laughs> I couldn't get. To, I can't even tell you. <laughs> We've all seen it, but I yeah. can't. I can't even. Um, and anything that Michael did. Um, just, it just yeah. killed me. Yeah. yeah, it just killed me. Um, well, but again, you know, there's 
Elaine bits of business that are, you know, like the push was very famous. The dancing, of course, very famous. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I don't know how that, what, what, was, what inspired that? <laughs> Did anyone, had anyone seen you actually dance by any chance? No, um, there, was, um, there was a writer in our show who had worked on another comedy show. Um, and, um, and he had this experience where uh, he had seen uh, one of the, ex the executive producer of the, this particular show at a rap party. Um, and this was somebody that was beloved and revered. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, um, and and very much respected, taken seriously. And at this rap party, this particular executive producer danced, and everything fell away. <laughs> <laughs> and so he wrote it into the. Script. I see. Yeah. And so then um, I just went home and stood in front of the mirror and tried to make the worst body movements I could think of. <laughs> But I had to make sure, we, we, one thing is for sure, I, I actually don't really dance like that. But, um, and, uh, although I will say that now I'm very self-conscious about dancing in I'll public bet. because I'll I know bet. that everyone's Everybody's watching. Is, yeah, yeah. Because they actually are. You know, that paranoid <laughs> feeling is justified. <laughs> um, but yeah. um, I, they, they couldn't play music. There's music in the scene, but when we shot it, they could not play music because I couldn't hear a beat because that was so, such irregular movements, you know? Yeah, so yeah. the beat would, right. would completely mess me up. <laughs> yeah. Many takes on that, or? Many takes. <laughs> I, oh, actually, maybe not so much. Yeah, I, I can't remember. But you, you got the, the, you conveyed it well. Thank let's, you. Let's put it that way. But uh, I'm going to cite one that, a show, it's not a famous one, but it was an episode called The Shoes, okay? Yeah. And in this episode, you get a pair of very nice shoes from a designer, uh -huh. and and uh, Jerry and and George are doing their pilot, and the the executive from NBC likes your shoes. Do you remember this? No. And okay, and she likes your shoes, and you're she does. Yes, and 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 you're saying to people, I, well, I what's the big deal with these shoes? I, I you know, I, I, people paying it to the body. The shoes. shoes. Oh yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And, and it, becomes, it becomes a thing because George accidentally sees the cleavage of the, do the daughter of, the <laughs> of, the, of Bob Balaban. Right. right? And so Bob they, Balaban, yeah, right? right. So they, and they have to get you to go show cleavage to Bob Balaban in right. order to get him back on board. Right. And the only way they can get in is that you have to give up the shoes to the... <laughs> to the her. To the, to her. Uh, it, uh, sounds like it, a great it show. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wish, wish you were there. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I liked it. <laughs> no, it sounds great. I, I, yeah. I can't, you know, we made a lot of those shows. And yes, of course, I, I vaguely remember it, but I haven't watched. Well, so you I don't, don't watch them, probably. Not really, you know, no. You don't watch them. No. Because if you did, you'd say, oh, I could have done that better, or. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know? It's hard to look at that look, too, you know, that big hair. Well, it's a great look. It's a great it's look. It's not a great look at all. Oh, it's a great look. <laughs> no, it's not a great look. Well, it, as I was saying, it was an iconic character. And then, of course, we heard all about the curse of Seinfeld, right? Please, right. And, and you obviously, I know you used it later, but did people you know, start to take it seriously or yes, not? Yes, yeah. that's what is so incredibly remarkable. I've yeah. had some... some Buddy, some journalist, somewhere. It wasn't me, I swear. I know. No, no, <laughs> you're, you're, you're too smart for that. There was, it was somebody coined that phrase, mm -hmm. and it took off. Yeah. You know, as if, you know, you know how many people have been on hit shows and then gone on and tried to get other jobs after the fact? I mean, it just didn't, it really honestly didn't make any sense. And, um, but it did, uh, it did have steam for some reason. It yeah. just kept going. And, and, uh, and all of a sudden, people, people, smart people were asking me, do you think you'll be able to break the curse? And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? I mean, <laughs> I'm, good, I'm an actress, and I'm going to keep trying to get jobs, and some of them will be better than others. I mean, I don't know what else to say, you know? So then you're on Christine. Yeah. In the first year, you win the Emmy at yeah. Christine. Yeah. And you get up and you give a speech. Yeah. And what did you say? I said, curse this, baby. <laughs> <And> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. So that sort of put that to bed. But yeah. you then went back to another 
uh, scene of an earlier, uh, not a curse, but uh, not a high point maybe, and you hosted Saturday Night Live. Oh, yeah. Which was kind of a cool thing, right? Right. I mean, yeah, it was a very cool thing. And that was, I think, right as Christine was on, right? Correct, yes. Um, I think that was the first year or the second year of Christine. And, um, I was, and I was there, and I have to say that going back was a delightful experience yeah. um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's sort of like going back to high school <laughs> and, and knowing what well. you know. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. not so much that, but having the experience <clears throat> of life and then going back and being able to uh, you know, react and, and be right. in that moment again with the experience. But moreover, um, it, to be honest, it's being run by different people than when I yes. was there. Lauren and was back. Lauren is back, yeah. and uh, and it was very uh, female friendly environment. Mm -hmm. um, and I brought to it experience. I knew how to. I had a feeling of how to go in as a host. I kind of knew how to uh, cover my ass, and 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 it was very fun. And it was actually uh, unbelievably. I was the first female cast member to go back to host, That's which right. I didn't even know mm -hmm. that until that. Very weak, so I, that was actually something I felt very proud about, which was which was great, and and I had a fantastic time doing it. You know, obviously everybody's done well, and so it's not. A, a, but it was a very interesting thing that people. It became part of the culture. The curse became part of the culture. Yeah, I know. You it's know, so, so strange. But I think that's another testament to how popular the show was. So yeah, uh, maybe so. So did did uh, uh, Elaine? change you in other ways? Like, was Elaine sort of like, uh, I know she was an iconic character for everybody else, but did she like get in your head? Uh, did she get in my head? Oh, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I mean, uh, um, y yes and no. I mean, uh, but, but maybe no, actually. No. I mean, no. Well, it, she made a little comeback in a way. Oh, yeah, that's right. But, yeah. But, before you came back as Elaine, Larry David creates a show, right? Yeah. And and he decides to use you as Julia. Right. Right. And <laughs> first he had you uh, in an episode where uh, you had to like go to his neighbor's house. Right. Right. Because uh, I don't know he left his notebook there or yeah, something. Yeah, or something. Yeah. And and and, and you wind up going in and the person's cat had died. <laughs> right. And and you had to sit through this long. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, but typical Larry, and and but again, that was sort of like him saying, uh, you know, Julia's existing outside reality as this character who's now yeah, Julia. Yeah, exactly. But it's also a very strange thing because you know that's, I mean, although I'm supposedly playing Julia, there are certain, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's a performance. Yeah. You know? So it it's seemed not, a little nastier than. Yeah, uh, than and that's Julia. not really. Yeah, so maybe it's like a subdued version of Elaine, or uh, right. I'm not really sure what it is. But it's it's a it's a it's a pretend Julia, and then of course, then then then, then we did Elaine, of course, later. Right. But did you improv that? The because Larry writes just the out, outlines of his. Yeah, story. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. all improv. Yeah. yeah. So that's that was also kind of interesting and fun. Right? Yeah, love it. What Fantastic. did you think about bringing the cast back for, um, for Curb? I thought. Uh, let's see, what did I think about it? Well, um, it was, going back was like going back in time. It's like being in a time capsule. Very strange experience. And actually a very happy experience. Um, but it was like being in a time capsule because they created the sets and everything. Yeah. And, you know, that was yeah. wild. Yeah. And all of a sudden we got the same crew there. and The same the crew? Oh yeah! Oh wow! Oh yeah! Yeah. <laughs> so it was a it was a reunion, a true reunion, yeah. and uh, and I don't know. It was again. It was sort of nice to go back, and I'd had uh, you know ten years or however many years later, and more experience under my belt. So it's sort of fun to re-enter that that scene that way. You know what I mean? It's never been done before like that that I can remember. Yeah. Like no. Very clever. You know, did that, but yeah, I was. It's good that Larry put that together. It was cool. Uh, well. So uh, you also created briefly another character, Ellie, who was a cabaret oh, singer, yeah, that's right. right? Yes, yes, yes. And, and, I, and I wondered if that was because you like, you wanted to sing, uh, you show off your singing. Um, well, I love to sing, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to do I wanted to try and do something completely different. And uh, that show, which was very short lived but dear to my heart, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and actually I think a very good show was a was a. 
maybe even a little bit ahead of its time because it was shot in real time. Right. And, uh, and it was shot single camera. And it was a sort of softer, um, it, it, it wasn't a, a balls out comedy, but it was, well, actually, I take that back. There, there were aspects of it that were, it had an incredible cast with Steve Carell. Steve and, Carell was in yeah, it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, Don Lake, <clears throat> and Darren Boyd, who was amazing, and Lauren Bowles. And, um, and it was, um, uh, it was an opportunity to sing, but the idea of sort of showing somebody's life in uh, in 22 minutes straight real time was an intriguing thing to do story-wise, and 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 a lot of fun. You know, and it had 10 million viewers and was canceled. How about that? Th that would now be NBC's number one show. Yeah. <laughs> so Ooh, well, anyway. But anyway. It, ah! <laughs> Doors close and doors open. That's right. right. That's, that's, that's okay. Right. And actually, and a lot of <clears throat> happy things came out of that too. Yeah, uh, I, w I mentioned this to you when we were backstage. But the, there's a promo shot for for um, yeah. Veep, uh, which is on buses now, and uh, it's also on the website for for the show, for the HBO website for yeah. Veep. And you should look at it because it's a remarkable, in, in my opinion, because I, it seemed to me that they asked Julia to sit and look in the camera and look smart and full of moxie, but completely befuddled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and somehow you did that in one, in one look. And I, and, and I thought it is exactly what the character is, is supposed to be, right? Yeah. She's, she's smart. She has a lot of moxie. She really can get in there and mix it up. Yeah. But she's really not quite sure what she's doing. Well, <clears throat> yeah, she's a, a exceptionally frustrated, and this is not what she expected at yeah. all. Um, and so I guess that's what it's meant to convey. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and hopefully a little bit of a subtle way. I, I don't, I'm not quite sure, but I'm glad that you dug it as, as much yeah. as you did. Yeah, it's really, it just, because I, I had seen the show and I'd seen the first three episodes, and then I saw this picture and I thought, boy, that is exactly what the character is. Yeah. And, and I don't know how, when they're taking a picture, if someone says, okay, now look this way, <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> frankly, that was a that was a long photo shoot. I mean, there are many, many, many different looks came out of it. Yeah. So, but I'm so happy that you that that you mention it because uh, we we wrung our hands over what look to choose for yeah. for a a, mm -hmm. a bit of time. So yeah. that's nice. Well, right? let's let's talk about Selena again a little bit because I think yeah. she she's the new character and she's a fascinating character. Yeah. Um, what do you think? You told me a little of her political backstory. What's her personal backstory? Her personal backstory um, is that she is uh, divorced. Uh, she has a daughter who's a freshman in college. Um, and, uh, you know, she was married for mm, about uh, 12 years. And um, she's just highly ambitious. Mm -hmm. And she has a, a very a tense relationship with her daughter, who in the show is played by the fabulous Sarah Sutherland, who is uh, Kiefer Sutherland's daughter, right. and Donald's granddaughter, mm -hmm. and um, she's marvelous. How old is she? Uh, in real life, yeah. uh, she's older than she looks right. in real life. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly. Mm -hmm. But, but she's, she's playing about She's like playing 18. 18. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, she's an incredibly talented actress. And uh, But there's tension there. And right. um, we're going to play it that she has a very good relationship with her dad. Oh. Um, if we're, if assuming that we're picked up, which I certainly hope we are, and I'm going to knock wood because I'm superstitious, um, uh, th th that will be something that you, you might uh, witness as an audience member. Well, it also means uh, they, that the character can be interested in guys. Yeah. This is an unusual thing for a vice president. That's right. And it's something that does, can you imagine, actually? Right. Yeah, that's right. A, a, um, a dating vice president. A dating vice president <laughs> and how difficult that is. No kidding. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and what does that actually mean? You know? Yeah. So, yeah, so you'll probably explore that a little, right? Uh, we definitely explore yeah. it. Yeah, we definitely explore it for a, uh, for a couple of episodes. Well, the show has a lot of back characters. You have, uh, uh, what is Anna Chlumsky's character? Anna Chlumsky's my chief of staff. Chief of staff. And she's phenomenal. She's sort of the fire putter outer. Right. And uh, she's been with me for a long time. Right. And uh, she's very devoted. She's very driven. She has no life outside of the office. Um, so we have that in common, a drive, and uh, she knows how to, as actually everyone knows in the staff, how to uh, accept the blame well, even when it's not their fault. In other words, if Selena does something it, that makes a mistake, um, it's somebody else's fault. Right. And uh, that's tons <laughs> of fun to do. <laughs> 
you also have, uh, uh, I guess he's called a body man, is that what he's called? He is indeed, a yeah, body a body man, man played right? by Tony Hale. Right. <laughs> uh, for instance, Reggie Love was uh, a Barack Obama's body, body man. man. And, uh, but he's, this guy's not quite up to Reggie no, Love's standard, I don't think. Uh, no, but he's a very good body man. It, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's got a bag he carries around that has everything possible you can imagine in it, uh, mentionables and unmentionables. Um, and he knows Selena very well. Um, uh, um, almost too well. I, oh, I don't mean to imply there's a re sexual relationship, but mm, I, no. but but he's very. Uh, it's an intimate relationship. Hey, but he's always whispering in her ear. Here's a. Oh yes, that's the, is it, this the, is a senator whose daughter. You know, yes, he's always the, uh, explaining to uh, Selena uh, who it is she's meeting as she as she meets uh, everyone in her life, which is all the time. Uh, in addition to that, they have such a shorthand that if Selena's standing here and she just goes like that, she knows that Gary's going to put Purell in her hand. He is. She assumes he is always there. And in fact, we did one ep uh, episode of the show further on in which S Selena takes her bag off and just goes like this and lets it go. And Gary's nowhere around, and all of a sudden, he chunk comes in out of, <laughs> out of the hallway and grabs it before it hits the floor. Well, I was going to yeah. ask you about the language, because uh, it's HBO, and they can say whatever they want. You have not done that on TV before. Yeah. Uh, was that liberating or strange or? Uh, I, I would say it was strange for about three and a half minutes. <laughs> And then it was utterly liberal, liberating because, frankly, I have a, I, I kind of have a sailor mouth myself, and ah. so it felt very natural. And um, uh, and it was liberating, but the whole process is liberating. I have to say, being at HBO and doing this project from a creative point of view, and the language is just one example. Um, the respect and the that sort of is is given to the artists and the process is. Unheard of. I mean, th this has been my experience th th thus far making these eight episodes. For instance, there were, s um, Armando likes to rehearse, and before we shot a single frame of this show, we had six weeks of rehearsal for eight episodes of the show. Mm -hmm. And that is just, I mean, n nobody does that. And I think that, the, that you see, we, we reap the benefits of it on screen. Mm -hmm. um, and there's an enormous amount of improvisation during that rehearsal period. Um, uh, a, a number of scripts were, were written, but then what happens is you, you read the scripts, then you get up on your feet, you start to do them, and then what Ar Armando um, so wisely and amazingly suggests is that you veer off the script and try and take it that way and see what happens. And try that, and that feels written, so go over there and try this idea. And then sometimes the scripts weren't completely written. And so we would come up with story line ideas and so on. There's a, it, for somebody who's as gifted a writer as Armando is, he's, he's not precious about the written word and his written word, and he's very happy to scrap something for something else if it seems real. So from an acting point of view, from a writing point of view, all of this was supported by HBO. And you have to understand that six weeks of rehearsal is not an inexpensive venture. It's, it's yeah. something. It also, you know? it looks like the directing is very different. It's uh, very different. It's, yeah, it's, it's moving and it's uh, yeah, it's two uh, 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 handheld cameras and mm -hmm. uh, 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 moving all the time. We have no marks as actors. Uh, marks being where you know they'll make a little mark on the floor, and this is where the mark you have to hit so that they can pull focus and get it on you right away. So these are the, our, our crew is extremely adept at this task, which is a, a, a pretty challenging one. Um, and so cameras are moving constantly. There's not, there's no matching to speak of. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, uh, people are going to look at this character and say, well, uh, is she Hillary? Because yeah. she ran for president, didn't make it. Right. Is she Sarah Palin? Because She's yes. an attractive, you know, woman. Oh, why, thank you. <laughs> who's y younger than many politicians, right? Clearly, right. Uh, and also, you know, a prominent political figure. Uh, it, you know, or is she somebody else? And was there any of that being fed into you, or were you just? No, it's incredibly important to me that, um, and I, 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 I'm, I'm sort of banging the drum about this that people understand <clears throat> it's not a parody in any way. Um, first of all, that. 
that's been done very well. That's number one, a parody of a number of those female politicians. And, but, but well beyond that, uh, um, I didn't want to be limited. It, it didn't, wouldn't make any sense. And also, it would identify a party. This, you will never know what party she's in. You'll just know that she's trying to straddle both positions all the time. Right. Um, it, but the, her, 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 the most important notion to her is to stay alive politically. So she thinks by, you know, uh, moderate. Be, I will moderate both sides. You know, mm -hmm. uh, stay in the middle. But the, but the the idea of a parody of doing a single person would be so limiting. So I've culled from all sorts of people. And by the way, not just females. Plenty of of males are. You know, I mean, it's interesting to watch, particularly now. It's such a rich time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good timing. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's very good timing mm -hmm. because everybody's <clears throat> selling themselves right now. So it's yeah. lovely to see the 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 sell that these guys are doing. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of fantastic. And and it'll be interesting because now that the you know the Republican nominee is basically decided, then the next thing is all the speculation about the vice president. I know it. So I know. You'll, you can observe all that. I but, know. Uh, Very but, excited but about you've, that. But you've finished all eight, eight of these. Yeah, they're all done. And and I, th there's been a somewhat long interregnum, I guess, between that getting on the air, right? I mean, is that is that's that's somewhat odd too for you, I, I imagine. Yeah, normally we're we're in production yeah. when the 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 show airs. Uh, this, this, so this is kind of a strange experience that, that it's all in the can and done and wrapped up all pretty and edited, and now just here it is. Here's you know, I mean, yeah. it's a it's a it's a different uh, experience for me anyway. Uh, used to doing uh, lo long runs of a television show. So yeah, I, I'm excited. Well, and it's only terrified. eight episodes too, which is yeah. That again is a lot of the performers now say they prefer cable for a lot of reasons mm -hmm. and one of them is you don't have to make 22 or 24 episodes right and it doesn't sort of take over your life and all that do you, did you find that was an attraction of it too yeah i mean i couldn't have done it otherwise because this show is shot on location and i am a true well, shot in baltimore right yeah baltimore mm -hmm. and dc both mm -hmm. but and so well i mean that's wasn't it shot location. on the set of the wire the same yeah. place? <laughs> well, same was. city. Same, well, no, I think it was in the, in the studio they used. Uh, I don't know that it was exactly the same. Okay. Well, it's, it's mm -hmm. a warehouse in which we yeah. completely replicated the hallways and the office of the vice president from the old executive building. So much so that when we had we had various staff members come by the set from the vice president's office and from Capitol Hill, and they walked in. They thought, "Oh my God, this is like we haven't left work." They couldn't believe it. I mean, uh -huh. it is an astounding production design, I have yeah. to say. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but it is on location, and I'm a, I have had the great uh, fortune of never ha really having to leave home to work, um, and I'm kind of a homebody, so it was a bit you know the fact right. that it's eight episodes was manageable for me. Yeah. You know? But did you do them all in like a short period of time? Uh, well, if you include the rehearsal, you know, I mean, well, it was like. Did you, did you rehearse in L.A. or in? Uh, we rehearsed uh, two weeks in L.A. and two weeks in Baltimore and two weeks in London, as a matter of fact. Oh, yeah. Because he was in London. Because he was in London. Armando right. Iannucci is British. That is right. <laughs> I know. Yeah, he seems like a, you know, an Italian director. I know. Well, but. he is Italian and Scottish descent. It's an. Right. So what is your, what is your character's relationship with the president like? Oh my God! Uh, dysfunctional. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, there's a bitterness there. He has no. It, there, 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 you, you, you'll only know his relationship to me by my reaction to him. There is a runner through the entire series of. I say to my scheduler, "Did the president call?" She says, "No." I say, "Fine." It's <laughs> this is a constant every runner, time. Every, yeah. <laughs> Um, no, no calls. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, there is, we, we, we do, um, you know, obviously the vice president um, has an office in the West Wing, uh, but um, in this particular administration, the president prefers for me to stay at the old executive uh, building in, um, in my vice presidential office there. Now, by the way, that is something that used to be the case. I mean that the vice president's office was in fact was there, and I'm trying to remember when. I could be wrong about this, but it might have been Mondale, I think, who first got mm -hmm. an office in the West Wing. Yeah. And um, so um, uh, there's a, a a great separation, a great separation. And this character, Selena, really wants to have something that she's oh know, yes known for. You bet. Yeah. yeah. She wants a, a a legacy. Right. Yeah. So what are we going to see from her the rest of the season? Well, you're going to see her try to get uh, work on this 
clean jobs legislation. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and that's her main thing. That, that and filibuster reform. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, the, she works very hard on both of those yeah. things, and it's a huge negotiation. Right. Um, and then she has crises that um, get in the way of, of both of those. And uh, you'll see her date, as I mentioned. And um, I, I hesitate to say too much more than that. Okay. Um, she's mm -hmm. going to campaign in Ohio. Uh, that's not going to go very well. She's going to campaign for um, a, a guy who's uh, running for governor. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's, it's just a whole hell of a lot of humiliation. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. Sounds, sounds like fun. No, it really is fun. I, I really, <clears throat> it's fun to do, I can tell you. I think we're, we've are, exhausted our questions, but I want to thank our guests for giving us a great talk. Yeah.